Let me try that again. <clears throat> okay, so let me share the screen. And when I open this, and no pressure. Savina's here now too. <laughs> uh, <yes. laughs> Little joke. <laughs> she told me that she was going to be watching from silence. So, all right. So can you see the screen now? Yeah. Yes. Okay, great. All right. Well, I'm happy everybody's here. I'm Shirley Gordon, and I'm a professor here in the College of Nursing. I am the coordinator of the Advanced Holistic Nursing Concentration and also the director of the um, Initiative for Intentional Health. But why I'm here today is because with um, Charlotte Berry and Beth King, um, we authored a um, book entitled um, Nursing Case Studies in Caring. And so today we're going to talk about teaching from nursing situations. And the book was written to um, capture our um, way of teaching here at the college. And so we'll talk about um, nursing situations as a uh, meaningful teaching learning strategy. Oh, that's not supposed to do that. And also discuss the learning process through which caring is understood as the essence of nursing. So it's always good to start with our college's definition of caring science. And that is that caring science in the discipline of nursing is the body of knowledge arrived at through intentional research and theory development focused on the relationship of caring to health, healing, and well-being of the whole person within the context of the family, community, society, and within the global environment. So what that means is everything we do within the College of Nursing is a reflection of our uh, philosophy of caring and our definition of caring science. So from all of our um, teaching and our service and our research is all grounded um, in caring and caring science. So we study nursing within the college here as a um, through the use of nursing situations. Now, our textbook is entitled Nursing Case Studies because the editor wouldn't let us use nursing situation in the title because of marketing concerns. People are more comfortable with case study or more familiar with the term case study than they are nursing situation. So in the very beginning of the book, we make it very clear that we are talking about um, nursing situations. This seems to be on an automatic advance for some reason. So for us, um, we study the the we study nursing through practice stories called nursing situations, which allow the student to uncover the knowledge, skills, and practices that are most relevant to nursing. And nursing situations then assist the student to focus on caring between the nurse and person, family, or group that nurtures well-being. So we are always focused on nursing as a discipline and the, um, and the object of nursing. So what is the difference between nursing situation and case study? And as you're teaching, it's important that we all use consistent language, regardless of how we were um, perhaps taught in our coursework. Um, when we're teaching within the College of Nursing, we encourage everyone to use the term nursing situation. A case study is an interdisciplinary construct and it typically tells the medical story. So that commonly you see things like all of the um, lab values and the diagnosis and the typical kind of um, information that you might find in um, a uh, beginning of shift or end of shift report, but it doesn't necessarily focus on nursing. So a nursing situation then intentionally focuses on or captures the discipline of nursing. So in, in addition to the medical story, we're also interested in um, caring relationships, we want to focus on the concept, the content of the discipline itself. It allows us to close the divide between didactic and clinical learning and supports um, contextual learning for our students. So the definition within the college philosophy is that nursing occurs within nursing situations. So that's a basic assumption of our college that all nursing occurs within nursing situations. So when you talk, look at, um, for example, Nightingale's book on what is nursing and what nursing is not, for us, nursing, if it's nursing, it occurs within nursing situations. And those are situations that are co-created lived experiences in which the caring between the nurses and persons enhance well-being. So it involves values, intentions, and actions of two or more persons choosing to live a nursing relationship. 
Right. So nursing situations, um, this is a, a quote from our text, that nursing situations draw students in away from the desk, the chart, the doorway, or machine with urgency to experience, to touch, to feel, to participate, and wonder what it is like for the nurse and the patient to be together at this moment in this complex particularity. Now, I had a conversation with some graduating um, seniors this semester, and we were talking about um, um, co-creating healing environments within um, the nursing relationship with patients. And they are so um, concerned about how are they going to maintain this perspective when they go into practice because they're being pulled from so many different directions. So how do you maintain this focus of the relationship between the nurse and the patient in this moment, in this complex um, uh, particularity. So within nursing situations, we are able to hear calls for nursing, which are relevant ways of saying, know me as a caring person in the moment to be with me as I try to live fully, fully who I am. So we encourage students to ask questions like, what is important to you in the moment? Because that allows the, the nurse and the patient to enter into a, a, a conversation, a dialogue, and to focus on what is important to this patient in this moment. And then for the nurse, as they're entering that situation, to reflect on what do I know about this person that helps me identify calls for nursing, and then the opposite is what do I need to know to, um, to identify calls for nursing? So through this, the nurses develop sensitivity and expertise in hearing calls for nursing that are intentional and that reflect experience, study, and reflection. And then once calls for nursing are identified, then nursing responses are developed. And nursing responses are, are a unique reflection of caring. The nurse brings knowing what is human, what it means to live caring and to nurture caring in each situation in, in creating or developing, co-creating those nursing responses. The general knowledge the nurse brings to the situation is transformed to provide understanding of the uniqueness of each situation. And this is hard for students to grasp because I think they always want to have one for each question or for each call, there should be one right, one response, one right response. And sometimes we address um, nursing situations in our evaluation in that way. This is the um, situation and there's one right response as opposed to being open to um, possibilities. Now, sometimes there is a right response or an, a best response in the beginning. If someone's not breathing, for example, <laughs> there's, there's something that needs to be addressed immediately. But the idea of being open to um, affirm and sustain the other's hopes and dreams and to be open to possibilities for calls, unique calls for nursing. So some of the questions might be in evaluating responses is how did the response reflect the call for nursing? and what other responses are possible. So when you're teaching um, students, whether you're in a classroom setting or in a, in a post-conference setting, in a clinical, these are some um, ways you can help students come to know and evaluate their own nursing responses. So the idea of what or how did the response reflect the call is kind of an immediate um, question and then a reflective question of what other responses are possible. Not that your response was incorrect, but what other responses might be possible. And so we also study nursing situations, and this is part of the um, Gordon Berry King framework in terms of how can we structure um, and guide faculty in teaching from nursing situations. So we look at multiple ways of knowing um, to understand the calls for nursing within any particular nursing situation and then to co-create um, nursing responses. Oh, sorry about this. Um, so most of you are familiar with these ways of knowing already, but I wanted to share some questions that you might share with students um, when you are leading a um, teaching from nursing situations. So some questions for personal knowing or how do I understand and know myself as caring person? Who is the patient as caring person? 
What is the meaning of this situation to me, to the patient? And what do I know from other situations? So what is my um, prior knowing that I might bring into this situation? Empirical knowing is factual knowing of monitors, labs, results, medications, patho. Um, so that idea of what do I know about this person, part of what we know about the person we get from these empirical um, biomedical um, measures. Um, so what evidence exists for best practice? And then how can caring science guide practice? Um, ethical knowing. How does the ANA code for nursing guide ethical practice? What are the individual nurses' values? What ought or should be done in this situation? Again, some of these are very reflective. Am I honest and truthful? Am I keeping the patient information conf confidential? Am I non-judgmental? Aesthetic knowing, what is the beauty of this situation? How have the arts influenced my practice? How do I support my patient's hopes and dreams? How can I transcend this moment to create possibilities? And what metaphors might express the meaning of this situation? It's always um, a lot of fun to um, listen as students um, work with metaphors in trying to help tease out their, their knowing of a particular nursing situation. Social political. What is the context of the person's life? What are the person's responsibilities? How are the person's, what are the person's cultural beliefs? Access to healthcare, self-housing or safe housing, leisure activities, and how can I support them? In all that we know about this person and their so social political um, context, how can I be supportive? Spiritual knowing. Helps nursing in grasping, sensing, knowing the whole person and environment, and some of the questions around spiritual knowing. And these are just examples. You can, there's a lot of questions you can ask, and you can tailor the questions for the unique nursing situation. What are the person's family, person or family's religious spiritual beliefs? We know from the research that's been done on spirituality in um, healthcare and nursing specifically, this is typically where an assessment of someone's um, spirituality ends. This is usually documented somewhere in the chart, and then this is the end of the spiritual knowing. But you can ask questions that will extend that knowing for, for the patients as well, what rituals are meaningful. Just because you know what their um, um, particular identified religious um, foundation is, doesn't, doesn't tell you what specific rituals are meaningful. And how did you support hope for this patient or family? I had a, a situation with my own mother where um, uh, she was terminal and the physician who was a friend of mine came to me and said, he, you know, he, he broke down crying and he said, the situation is, is hopeless. And I helped him come to know that the situation wasn't hopeless. We could always hope for something better in the moment for my mother. And, um, and then we ended up having a long conversation about that. And I shared some literature with him because he was suffering um, as a result of not being able to um, offer hope to me or to the patient when, in fact, it was not a hope, hopeless situation. And unknowing, and this is probably one of my favorite ones because it's probably the one um, I have to reflect on the most because with all that we know and all that we bring to a situation, it's important to remember that um, the, another way of knowing is unknowing, which relates to setting aside what our preconceived ideas are, setting aside what we know to be open to learn what is meaningful to the patient and what we need to know about this unique um, uh, individual patient or community or family. So unknowing guides us in seeing persons more clearly in their individual and unique hopes and dreams for well-being. And I always think of um, Meyerhoff's alternating rhythms when I think about um, all of the other ways of knowing and unknowing. We go back and forth between this is what I know and what do I need to know. 
So some questions related to unknowing is, how have I communicated being open to learn about the other? How can I be helpful to you? And again, the question, what matters most to you, provides an open opportunity to come to know the person in new ways. And how did you convey being authentically present? So being present in the moment to come to know the patient or person or family community is important. Emancipatory nursing, a lot of attention being paid to this right now and in addition to socio-political. So the process of understanding barriers that create unfair or unjust social conditions. So what barriers create um, unfair or unjust social conditions for this nursing situation? What does it mean to be excluded from healthcare or medical decisions? And what advocacy measures are needed? What advocacy measures are needed in the moment with this individual nursing situation? Or what advocacy measures are um, needed on a larger scale, either a local, national, federal, global level to, um, to remove barriers? It's also important to know what, in addition to barriers, what access is there? What strengths are there? What can be um, built upon as opposed to just focusing on those um, specific things that might be known as barriers? And then, of course, Meyerhoff, um, and I'm not going to go through each one of these, but um, Meyerhoff's ingredients of caring um, are used by Meyerhoff um, as, to describe caring as helping the other to grow and requires the understanding of the other. So it's a very nice fit with our um, philosophical framework. And so some of the questions related to this are, um, what happened between you and the one nursed? And when we invite students to write their own nursing situations, we invite them to reflect on that as they're writing their situation. What happened between you and the one that you provided nurses for? Another question is, what caring ingredients guided your practice in this nursing situation? So often, um, faculty might um, invite students to um, share a nursing situation in post-clinical or write about a nursing situation that they experienced, and then identify one of Meyerhoff's ingredients of caring that was particularly relevant to that situation. <laughs> Excuse me. And then um, what was learned from coming to know the other, using trust, using honesty, courage, alternating rhythm. And for those of you that are um, teaching with us, you know that our syllabi are organized around Roche's caring attributes and um, her six C's. And oops, so some questions related to each of these. And of course, you could identify multiple questions related for each one of these caring um, attributes. But for competence, how did you demonstrate competence? Compassion was a call for compassion heard. How did you respond? Conscience, how was your care guided by your conscience? Commitment, how did you exhibit commitment to your patient, the community? Confidence, how did you and your patient come to have trust in one another? And comportment, how did you demonstrate respect to self and the profession in this unique nursing situation? And then all of those together, I believe, leads us to transformative knowing. And stories from practice then relate the liveliness of one's um, experiences. I'm going to, oops, I'm going to stop it right there and see if there's any questions before um, we show this video, which is an exam an exemplar of um, using a nursing situation. I'm sorry I missed the beginning. This is awesome. I'll go back and listen later, but um, this would be a great thing to put in our uh, NUR 3115 course. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And um, the video that I'm going to show is available and, I'm, and the screen that you're looking at now shows you where it is on our website because sometimes um, students and faculty have a difficulty locating it. But this is under the ABI um, portion of our website. And um, you would go to the um, Ann Boykin Institute under outreach, community practice and outreach. And then um, it's under uh, videos, YouTube videos. And so it's there. So I'm gonna stop sharing here and pull up the video. 
I thought I had it open. Let's see, there it is. All right, and I'll share screen again. And before I start the video, you can see that, can you see the video here? Is it sharing? Can you guys see that? Yes, 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 yes. Okay. Yeah. okay. So this um, nursing situation is, is one of the nursing situations that is presented in um, the, the book, um, Nursing Case Studies and Caring. And um, it came out of a student's journal. I'm going to start this about 11 minutes long. Can the purpose of this presentation is to ex. Could you hear it? Yeah, we could hear it, Shirley. Oh, great. The Barry great. Gordon great. King framework for teaching learning nursing from practice stories of caring called nursing situations. In the following nursing situation published in Nursing Case Studies and Caring, the Barry Gordon King framework provides the inspiration for a new and different understanding of caring for a group of men hospitalized with chronic mental illness. Watercolor paintings are threaded throughout the presentation to enhance understanding of caring in this nursing situation. The following nursing situation focuses on the caring between a nurse and a group of men hospitalized with chronic mental illness. This nursing situation highlights the transpersonal caring relationship between the nurse and the ones being cared for that creates harmony, wholeness, and unity of being in caring moments. As you enter into the nursing situation, reflect on the following question. What are the expressions of caring between the nurse and the ones nursed? Around the 4th of July, our large hospital provides a dazzling fireworks display for the local community. Everyone is invited, and it is a fun-filled event geared towards employees, their families, and our patients. I wanted to do something special for the remaining eight patients that made up the psychiatric ward where I worked. Now, this particular ward was being phased out, and these eight men were considered placement issues because of the severity of their mental illness. The problem was, I worked the A shift, and the fireworks show was obviously scheduled in the evening. I began planning a party for the men, but because of prior holiday commitments by the staff, I found little support for my party. Undaunted, I proceeded with my plans, eventually soliciting a few dollars. At 7 p.m. the night of the celebration, I showed up with 10 large pizzas, five ice cold watermelons, a cooler filled with soft drinks, lawn chairs, eight of the coolest looking straw hats purchased at the local dollar store, and a boom box with a Michael Jackson CD. We promptly set up folding tables in an open space outside the porch area of our ward that afforded an unobstructed view of the upcoming fireworks. Now, let me just say, we partied. The eight patients, three staff members, and I had a night to remember. The smiles on everyone's faces as we ate slice after slice of pizza and watermelon and danced to Michael Jackson's hits remains a priceless memory. As I surveyed the scene, I was overcome by the feeling that this was more like a family reunion. We weren't just patients and staff members, but friends truly enjoying this special evening together. Later, as darkness descended upon the grounds, a contended hush fell over our gathering in anticipation of the fireworks. I'm not hearing anything. It would diminish, and I would be transferred to another ward. Then, one day, as I was searching for an item in a storage closet, I happened across a funky little straw hat. The memories of dancing while waiting for the fireworks to begin came flooding back. Nursing is creating positive memories for your patients. The study of practice stories called nursing situations allows the student to uncover the knowledge, skills, and practices most relevant to nursing. Nursing situations assist the student to focus on the caring between the nurse, the person, family, or group that nurtures well-being. The Barry Gordon King framework is based on a philosophical understanding of nursing as a discipline and profession grounded in caring. Components of our model include 
nursing situations, which are focused on caring between the nurse and the one nursed. Ways of knowing are used to understand the call for nursing and responses in a given situation. Calls for nursing reflect what is important for the one nursed at that moment in time. Nursing responses are the unique expressions of caring. Outcomes of the responses are changes that occur in response to nursing care as defined within a selected theoretical framework. Reflections on teaching, learning, explore how the study of nursing situations enhance knowledge of nursing. Caring concepts are abstract ideas central to caring philosophical and theoretical frameworks. We use Roach's caring attributes and Mayorov's ingredients of caring to language the essence of caring in nursing situations. We assert that nursing is a discipline and profession grounded in caring. An essential component of nursing situations is the identification and explication of the caring between the nurse and the one nursed. And so we ask, what is the caring between the nurse and the one nursed? What happened between you and the one nurse today? For example, in the story, 4th of July, the nurse Michael illuminated several concepts. You may discern other concepts as you step into the nursing situation, but we will explicate a few. Roach is carrying attributes of competence, compassion, and conscience are intertwined as Michael connects to the men's experience of being excluded and knowing the men should be included in the traditional 4th of July party. So Michael came up with the idea of holding their own 4th of July party. Mayor of scary ingredients are also illuminated in the nursing situation. Alternating rhythms guided Michael's focus on the 4th of July party as he continued to see the men as individuals who lived together in a long time and are now being separated and sent to other living arrangements and settings. Michael nurtured hope as he replaced the antiseptic atmosphere of their daily routine with relaxation and fun. The ways of knowing are the knowledge the nurse brings to the nursing situation. For this presentation, we'll focus on the following. Personal knowing. Michael describes, remember why most of us got into nursing. It might sound cliche, but yes, I wanted to make a difference and to help people. That's what we experienced that wonderful evening. Oh, the drudgery that sometimes makes up our days as nurses, the meetings, the audits, the in-services, but then at any patient encounter, one chooses to make a difference. A smile, a kind word, or just listening quietly to a concerned patient goes a tremendous way, and it is simple to do. Ethical knowing. The American Nurses Association Code of Ethics and Social Policy Statement guided Michael's understanding of nursing roles, responsibility, and accountability in caring for vulnerable populations. Aesthetic knowing is the process of artfully weaving together all ways of knowing in unity and fullness to create a meaningful caring moment in the nursing situation. Michael's 4th of July party was an expression of aesthetic knowing. The watercolor drawings in this presentation provide an all at once appreciation of the beauty of nursing and the depth of nursing knowledge that has been unpacked and illuminated in the aesthetic representations. A call for nursing reflects what is important for the one nurse at that moment in time. Tui and Boykin assert the challenge in nursing is not to discover what is missing, weakened or needed in another, but to come to know the other as caring person and to nurture the person in a situation specific creative way. In the 4th of July story, Michael heard the silent but distinct calls for the men to be part of the mainstream community of the hospital and to be understood as caring persons. The nurse's response to a call for nursing is a unique expression of caring. The creation of a response begins with reflection on knowing what it is like to be human, what it means to live caring, and ways to nurture caring in each situation. The nursing response grounded in caring acknowledges and affirms the other's wholeness and hopes and dreams for well-being. Michael's responses were grounded in Watson's theory of human caring. Using the lens of Watson and the Caritas processes, Michael described, the Caritas process of practicing loving, kindness, and equanimity by illustrating the barriers between staff and patients could be dismantled. The caring between staff and patients during the 4th of July celebration was a reflection of another Caritas process, developing and sustaining a helping, trusting, human caring relationship. A third Caritas process, creative use of self, was brought to light that evening as a transpersonal moment 
in which staff and patients sparked a lasting connection. The outcomes of responses for the one nurse are changes that occur in response to nursing care. We reflect on the following questions. What was the influence of caring on the response? What evidence supports the effectiveness of the response? How did the outcome support the selected theoretical perspective? What was the rippling effect of the outcome? Using Watson, Michael voices the outcome of creating a healing environment. He added, these lonely men felt they were part of a caring family for the first time in a long time. The feelings of being institutionalized evaporated for those few brief hours. Someone cared, someone responded. What a tremendous change in attitudes that occurred between the participants <laughs> that evening. We also look at what the outcome of the responses were for the nurse. For Michael, the Caritas processes came together as an exquisite example of a transpersonal relationship. He described, there under the stars and between brilliant flashes of fireworks booming overhead, a caring, healing, loving consciousness was formed. We were not machines, but spirits made whole. Reflecting on teaching and learning nursing, we offer that nursing expertise is developed through intention, experience, and the study and reflection on nursing situations. Theory is brought to life and translated into the day-to-day -day practice in nursing situations. And retelling nursing situations offers opportunities to create anew possibilities for self and others. We invite you to think and to reflect on nursing situations as a repository of nursing knowledge and the usefulness of teaching and learning nursing from nursing situations. We are thankful for the following contributors. Nursing situation author, Michael Shaw. Artist, Barbara Montgomery O'Connell. Narrators, Christopher de Maizière, undergraduate nursing student, and Dr. Charlotte Barry. All right, I'm gonna stop it there. And um, just um, say that, Again, this was a nursing situation that came out of a student's um, journal. And as you can see, the framework can be used from any caring um, framework. Um, we teach from our philosophy of caring and the College of Nursing. This particular one was um, using Watson's um, Caritas processes. So it can be used, the framework itself can be used um, for any, um, any caring, uh, well, any theoretical framework actually. And we do go over that in, in the book. But what I wanted to talk about is what, what you have taken away from this in terms of your teaching and approaching teaching. This is, this is a situation that was presented and it runs through the entire process, but in listening to it, how did you think you might be able to integrate it? Or have you, how have you started integrating nursing situations? And anyone can jump in. I see Dee has her hand up. Dee, go ahead. Well, um, Shirley, in the first video that you identified from the ABI, you know, with those processes, um, I just wanted to explain to all of the uh, participants that uh, that uh, is actually the transcultural caring dynamics in nursing and healthcare theoretical framework. And, and each one of those uh, conceptual processes are identified in that video. So I know you showed that first, but then you showed um, uh, your model as well as Dr. Watson. Mm -hmm. So I want to clarify you that. You talking about these right here? Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. This is all the, the uh, transcultural caring uh, theory. Mm -hmm. caring These are, yeah, this um, is the web page for the um, YouTube videos under the ABI uh, resources section. And so all of these, um, part one through eight, are all the, um, the series that Dr. Ray was just talking about, but there's additional um, videos here as well. Mm -hmm you can view and all of the summer or the past uh, summer academies of the ABI are all listed here with video recordings. 
So there's a lot of good information here that you can use these videos um, in your courses, refer students to view them prior to class. Um, they could even, some of them could even be used for um, research purposes. So there's the various theories of caring that are here, Borkin and Shonifer's work, technological competency, caring innovations, and some toolkits. So there's quite a bit here under um, the resources page. Thank you, because what showed up initially was just, uh, uh, you know, the first one, which is my theory. So I thought right. I better identify right. what it is uh, first. So thank you very much. Yes, and thank you for that. And to find this, you go to our College of Nursing website and under Outreach and Practice, and here's the um, Ann Boykin Institute here. And then you go to Caring Science YouTube videos. And that's where all those videos are located. Okay, yeah, so thank awesome. you for that. Awesome. All right, so lots of um, resources there to help you in your teaching and also for your students as well. If you have a student that's using, uh, for example, a particular theoretical framework, they may find some of those resources useful to them. So Shirley, hey, um, you know, I just always learn something new. Uh, this was particularly, I think, helpful the, the your intro PowerPoint. I have seen a beautiful video before. Um, <clears throat> so I know that that the administration here probably has heard me say this before, but um, but um, and I think that Katie has. Yeah, Katie, you could speak to this because you're on. Um, but um, when the book just first came out, um, the case studies um, and nursing situations book, um, we, um, I, what I did was I did, a, I made an assignment where the students <clears throat> do a role play. Um, they, I have, I, I think there's 10 chapters with nursing situations in the book and I, do you know um have a hat they have pull out their number out of a hat you know it's chapters like 16 through 26 or something and so whatever chapter they got um they could pick who they want to work with because i know we try to you know get people to get to know new people but this is the first role play they were doing together first group activity in the course and so <clears throat> they had to role play the um, nursing situation in class and uh, and it it's it was just really great it was just you know it, it prompted a lot of good discussion um, they had to identify you know two ways of knowing which are if they read the chapter it's right there in the chapter you know and then um, two two things that um, uh, that what identify ways that they think um, uh, another theory was applied to that situation. So not just the nursing is caring theory, but other theories like the transcultural nursing that, that Dr. Ray is talking about. So um, that I thought was just uh, such an amazing book and a great way to have people kind of make it more real and mm -hmm. that they might remember it when they're doing their practice. Mm -hmm. I hadn't heard that use. That's that's kind of exciting. Thank you. That sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah, I liked it. Yeah, Lisa. Um, when I took over three one one five from Lisa, sorry, my lighting is really bad. I have a window behind me, and it's making me look funny. <laughs> You're, You're in silhouette. silhouette. <laughs> <laughs> but I took over three one one five from Lisa. She told me about that assignment, and I just thought, oh, you know, that sounds really nice and fun, and so. Um, we we still do the the role plays, and you're right, Lisa. It does um, it starts such nice conversations, and I think it's so nice that the book has real stories, real nurses, you know, real nursing situations. And um, just the other day, we were having a conversation because in one of the stories, it was about a nurse who had helped her patient um, become extubated after multiple attempts. She had her gallbladder out and then had a lot of difficulties with the extubation process. And this nurse and this patient just formed a really tight bond through that process. And at the end of the nursing situation, when she finally did it, the nurse said she kissed her patient on the head. 
and my, at the top of her head. And my students were like, can you do that? Is that illegal? Like, <laughs> is that really okay? You know, and so it started this really lovely conversation about like, you know, what is um, caring touch and how, how do you know what's appropriate or what's not appropriate? It was, it, it, it's, these stories are just lovely. So thank you, Shirley, for, and uh, Beth and uh, Charlotte for making this book. <clears throat> well, and how exciting that students are, are raising questions that matter to them, that then they could go and do some additional um, study on to see what's out there in the literature related to those questions that they're raising and then bring those back. So that is, that's really exciting too, because it gets at the heart of what matters to them as students, what questions they have, as well as what matters to the patient. So thank you for that. Marlene, you've had your hand up. Oh, and Beth's joined us, yay. You're on mute, I think. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. I've seen this video many, many times and I love it. I think I love it more and more every time I see it because yeah. it's, you know, you always, it just is so heartwarming and touching to, to see the, um, you know, what this particular nurse did in that situation and how it really transformed the, their, their lives in the moment. And so, yeah, thank you again for showing it. And the, 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 um, the PowerPoint presentation is excellent and something that I hope our um, nursing educator, education students uh, really get grounded in this approach. I'm sure they do. Uh, Mm -hmm. those faculty that are teaching it here. I just wanted to call to our attention that the, the um, AACN essentials again, because um, the, the essential on um, knowledge for nursing practice, there's a toolkit that I, I participated in developing and we did reference this, but it's so important that this is how the knowledge for nursing practice is taught. This is how we teach knowledge for nursing practice. It isn't something that is, you know, taught as a theory course in the first, you know, first course that students have, and then we forget about it. It's something that's integrated throughout the curriculum. So, um, and, and this is an opportunity for us because, you know, we, we know that AACN is saying that these essentials and how they are taught, not only what is taught, but how they are taught is, is now you know important and will be a part of um, CCNE's accreditation process. Mm -hmm. So I think um, you know what you all have done is certainly even more important to our whole national scene in nursing education. Thank you. It is an exciting time for caring in nursing, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and I, Shirley, uh, this is Sabina. I don't know if you guys can hear me or not. We can hear you. But I'm on a phone and I'm in a car, so it won't allow me to uh, see the screen, nor would it allow me to put my hand up. So I just had to break in. <laughs> I'm glad you did. <laughs> I thank you. Just as Marlene says, I love this story. And actually, let me tell you how this story came about. It was a doctoral course in um, nursing theory development. Mm -hmm. And at the beginning of the course, I invited the students each to uh, recollect a meaningful nursing situation and to write that down and share it with everyone in the class so that, that uh, knowing each other as caring nurse, as beautiful mm -hmm. nurse was a bond for the whole class. But then we each assignment or each discussion throughout the course, each student drew on their own nursing situation. Mm -hmm. And Michael's nursing, this uh, video that you have came about in an assignment for these students to, um, to uh, interpret their nursing situation from the perspective of any nursing theory that they chose. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and this was a doctoral course. So that tells you, you know, that, mm -hmm. that your approach to teaching nursing by using nursing situations 
is not only useful, but it's essential at all levels of nursing education. Mm-hmm. Thank you. That, that was all. Uh-huh. <laughs> well, thank you. We're always so glad to have you with us. So. <laughs> My pleasure. He did give, uh, this is Beth, he did give permission for us to use it and is credited on the screen. Yes. Yeah. That's true of all the nursing situations in the book. They, we have permission from the, um, from the authors of the situations to use them in the book. And, I, and as, as um, someone said, it makes it very, I think Lisa said, it makes it very real because they are um, situations that have been shared by nurses for the purpose, or student nurses, for the purpose of learning nursing. So does anybody else have a a way in which they're teaching from nursing situations that they would like to share? Because there's no one right way to do it. So it's it's an approach that works really well with the flipped classroom approach that we're taking now where students are encouraged to do reading outside the classroom. And then the time you spend with students in the class is spent in discussion and dialogue um, to enhance their learning. So you can help um, bring in what they are, what they are focusing on in that per, for that particular week uh, for class or that particular module, and as well as building on the previous modules that you've had. So they, you can look at them in their totality, or you can look at a nursing situation from a very specific framework as well. Marianne, you had a, your hand up? Yeah, um, well, you know, I teach mid-surge and it can be very uh, clinical. Um, Mm -hmm. try to avoid the medical model, but we have to give the facts. So um, for each unit that we've done, it's, I mean, it's my, getting into my fifth year teaching, I've tried to develop a nursing situation for each topic, each content area, Mm -hmm. so Mm -hmm. that um, we not only talk about the labs and the assessment and the um, clinical interventions, but also about the ways of knowing and um, how to meet what matters most to the patient. And uh, the last one we just did last week was on a patient with pancreatitis who had um, an ERCP and he had a perforation. And all in the meantime, his parents had come in and his parents um, knew that that had to do with, with alcohol abuse. And they, the guy got in a DUI a few years later and his parents, he's a college student and his parents were like, I know he's been drinking, but that wasn't why he had pancreatitis. So there was that whole relational thing about the parents and the the patient and, you know, how they maybe weren't being so supportive. And so the students asked, we talked a lot about that, you know, what can you tell the, the parents if the if the son's angry with them? And, you know, mm-hmm. so we, we just talked a lot about the relational needs of the patient, aside from taking care of the medical situation. So I try to bring that in, you know, you have to get kind of creative sometimes, and, but then sometimes the students will take the tangent all on their own and you're all of a sudden into um, caring science from, you know, from that juxtaposition. So it's, it's very helpful. Well, and the framework, the framework is designed to help you um, regain focus. We do have to cover the empirical knowing. So some of the, you know, the, the med surge kind of uh, content from, from the medical side of the story, that's important. And it's part of coming to know the patient and part of knowing what's important to patients in the moment, but it's not the only thing. So we take a more holistic view and the framework helps us do that by providing some um, questions that can serve as prompts. Um, and so Ben, and you're right, sometimes students will pick up on something and as a, as a faculty member, you want, to, um, you want to encourage their thinking and their way of expanding knowing while at the same time help maintaining your ability to meet the objectives of the course. So it, it is always, it's, a, it's an alternating rhythm, isn't it? It's a back and forth. And um, but still remaining focused on the discipline of knowing, um, or discipline of nursing, and what's important for the discipline in terms of the content. Yeah, and I really love teaching from the ways of knowing. Organize, mm-hmm. and I know you do this too, but organizing my whole presentation around ways of knowing, mm-hmm. and then the responses, which you know we as nurse the calls and the responses that we might hear, but it gets the students one way of thinking beyond just, they're pretty good at empirical knowing, you know? Mm -hmm. And we're pretty good at teaching empirical knowing. Yes. Um, But we sometimes, I think, tend to, you know, last two minutes of of a a presentation might be related to the other four ways of knowing. 
which are equally as important as the empirical knowing to get the whole picture. But um, if you, if, you know, now some, I just think it's valuable to try and do that, do the whole presentation around the different ways of knowing. Five ways, present all five. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, you know, see, and then students can start thinking that way, you know? Mm -hmm. Right. And your nursing situations too can progress over the yeah. course of the semester. So you can start with the nursing situation and then that's just, that situation changes just like a patient situation would normally change, right? So you can, you can help them see how those changes occur and how does that change the call for nursing? How does that change responses? How, what are we looking at in outcomes? What matters most to the person changes over time. So if you're with your um, patient that had um, acute pancreatitis, what mattered most to that patient in the initial hospitalization may be very different than what it might look like two days later when um, the parents arrived, for example. So wouldn't it be fun if we if we we could do it, we could do a we could do a study on this, you know, um, on whether students are able to absorb the knowledge by if we present the whole course according to the ways of knowing calls and responses versus mm -hmm. maybe some of our older lectures that maybe we probably had more of a medical load to them. Um, it would be interesting to see, uh, you know, the student's perception of it. You know, another I had a thought. Oh, go ahead, Shirley. Sorry. No, I was going to say that would be that would be a very interesting study. Um, except we teach all from nursing situations, so it's hard to get that control, that older control now. But um, <laughs> I'm not sure we all do, do it for um, one um, session no. or something for sure. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I think we all try to do it in certain components. Mm -hmm. But I mean, mm -hmm. I mean the whole pro the whole course. Yeah, yeah. I did a the I taught um, patho one time and. Uh, I hadn't taught patho in a long time. And then I was asked to teach it and I structured the whole patho course around, um, this is for undergraduate students, around nursing situations. Mm -hmm. And I even for the blueprint for the exams, I gave them a set of nursing situations and that the, all the questions would come from those nursing situations. Mm -hmm. So for this nursing situation, so there might've been a nursing situation around pancreatitis, for example, what do you need to know um, in order to provide care for a patient with um, acute pancreatitis? So it was fun. And, and what happened was I had nursing situations and a set of questions, and then they were going around to their other faculty to ask them the answers because they couldn't figure them out. And then I had faculty calling me going, okay, what's the answer to this question? <laughs> so it was fun. It can be a lot of fun teaching from nursing situations as well. It's, it really alleviates that, you know, need to prepare, you know, two and a half hour, three hour lectures every week. It allows you to use your knowing um, in more creative ways. I, I just oh. had a thought, though, about the, the whole um, the next gen NCLEX. Mm -hmm. They're, those are unfolding. They call them unfolding case oh, studies. So yeah. you have a study and then you get more information and then a different type of question and more information. And I just had this like, oh, oh we can put our nursing situations into unfolding, unfolding. unfolding yeah. nursing situations with the appropriate mm -hmm. next gen style questions to go with them. Like, wow, that's got to restructure things again. But that would all work, you know, no, plus get the students ready for NCLEX. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Shirley, can I jump in again? Absolutely. Sabina here. Okay. Well, you, something you said triggered a thought in my mind that I want to share. And that is there is there is no the patient with pancreatitis. It's always this person with pancreatitis. And that's where the difference comes in. Whether if you structure your course on pathophysiology and medical therapeutics, you're addressing the patient with pancreatitis. If you structure your course according to your, your framework, the uh, nursing situation framework, then it's this patient with pancreatitis. And I think that makes all the difference. That's an important distinction. Yes, thank you for sharing that. You know, and sometimes, um, I think, Savina, because sometimes, you know, we, it's the languaging of some of this that helps us, um, you know, <laughs> Put it in our caring language, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. 
I read a dissertation the other day that I, I don't even know whether it was this semester or last semester. And, you know, I looked at it and I said, oh my gosh, we missed the languaging of it um, because the the person wasn't the center of it. It was some other, I don't know, disease or something that was the center of it. Whereas we try to rephrase it where it's the person. Um, but even, you know, like I'm thinking about this, I'm trying to do a lecture right now on, uh, what am I doing on? Oh, drugs, right? I keep, I mean, I'm like, this course needs reframed in, in a different manner. But uh, right now they're just gonna get the drugs today. That's what they're getting. <laughs> Um, we're all doing the best we can right yeah, and totally and we that. all came up not being not learning nursing from this framework right so we all need um gentle reminders um or two, to, um, two or three sets of eyes you know yeah I did, so you think oh thank god i got it done um, mm -hmm. hey what do you think have someone else look at and they say well hey you missed something here i i don't know it's just all a work in progress absolutely absolutely yeah Marlene, you have your hand up. Is that from before or? Oh, no, I, I wanted to jump in on something else and just comment on um, what Marianne what Marianne shared with us in the nursing situations that she's been developing. And I was thinking, you know, this is the scholarship of teaching. And, you know, we all know that it takes creativity and work to develop these nursing situations and, you know, in the way that we want to share them. And I just wanted to encourage everybody to to once that is done to publish these you know wouldn't it be wonderful if we have a a um we can have these nursing situations available uh, on the shared drive or even in you know on the abi website or something so that these are resources that um, faculty can use in the future so absolutely there is a second and video in coming out um it's not not done yet, but there is a second video coming out. Great. But it is that time component that we're all, at least I struggle with, my God. Mm -hmm. we need but that's, that's an important comment though, Marlene, about the scholarship of teaching and particularly for the um, the nursing faculty on, on, the, on this presentation. And that is when you're setting your, um, your teaching goals for um, each academic year, so for um, Marianne, you might have as a teaching goal that you would be developing a nursing situation for a particular course in a particular context. Instead of creating additional goals, um, capture those things that you are doing that are creative um, expressions of how you're teaching from a caring perspective. And then you can, pre um, can present those. We have uh, quite a few presentations at the um, IAHC conference each year. We have a category for education and people want to see exemplars of how people are teaching from within a caring perspective. So teaching from nursing situations and how you're doing that would be very welcome at the conference. And that's what people are coming to the conference for to get good ideas about how to teach um, in new ways that are engaging for students and that reflect um, a caring philosophy, particularly for faculty that are in um, colleges of nursing where they're not teaching from a caring perspective. That isn't their uh, philosophical framework for their school. So, um, so yeah, begin to look at some of this work as for what it is, which is creative um, scholarship of teaching. Okay, say, so is anybody doing uh, much work on aesthetic knowing and, and the, related to the nursing situations? Anybody? Well, I have ready to pull up the Journal of Art and Aesthetics to serve oh. as inspiration. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yes, hey, yes. Katie, are, are students still doing, they still are doing their aesthetic project though, right? Mm -hmm. For 3115? Um, yes, yes, they are. Um, every semester they do that project where they express um, what nursing is caring means to them in a creative way. And it's, it's so great. I love it so much. I wanted to Anybody at the grad level doing it? Anybody at the grad level doing it? Well, this this um, past was it two semesters ago, Dr. Gordon. I had a student from the 
um, advanced holistic, the MSN holistic course. Mm -hmm. And she worked with me on developing a nursing situation for um, using the voices of parents whose babies had died. And it was a research and we used their voices to do a simulation. And it was absolutely beautiful. Mm -hmm. And um, we hope to have that for um, the students in 3465. We're going to use that to um, talk with them about how to, um, how to interact and build relationship with, with families whose babies have. This was a baby who, their situation is around a mother who had to make the decision to withdraw the baby from life support. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. we were successful in getting that simulation completed. It was really John, yeah, that would be great for the nurse educator if I, uh, that nurse educator concentration to have them use that in their in one of their teaching courses, maybe. Mm. Dawn, um, next month is is about nursing situations and simulations. We're hoping you're going to come and share with us, and that you might share more about that beautiful nursing situation yeah. in that session. Mm -hmm. yeah, she, Frank, and I know all the holistic students um, include aesthetic um, representations in their journals as part, that's one of the criteria for their journal. So they do it on, instead of just a one-time project in a course, they do it um, on an ongoing basis. So, and it's around a specific, you know, they, they identify what they're going, what it's supposed to um, re represent, but, um, but yeah, they do it on an ongoing basis and everyone's uncomfortable with aesthetic representations at first. You, they tell you things like, I can't draw stick people. And then they come out with these beautiful things. Um, so it's and very moving to them because it helps you articulate caring in ways that doesn't, that don't always require language because our language is limited, I think, in expressing caring. Dee, I see you have your hand up. Yes, uh, I have been thinking about, um, I know we're speaking of nursing education, but continuing education within organizations, you know, whether they be hospitals or clinics and how a, a nurse administrator or manager, you know, might take your um, uh, framework and then help nurses in practice have mm -hmm. a clearer understanding of what their role should be or or perhaps is but should be uh more caring or how how to help them within uh these complex systems because this is such an issue and you know the complaints that i hear from i live at saint andrew so people go to hospitals you know from here and, and the struggles that they have of thinking that they're not, you know, provided the kind of caring that they would prefer to have. And certainly as, as people with um, age, you know, this need for love and caring, that kind of thing. So I can see how beneficial your uh, framework and theory will, would be for, you know, continued ed in organizations. Thank you. That's a great idea. Yeah. Anyone else have an example or a question on how would I incorporate teaching from nursing situations in a particular context? Do you guys remember Marguerite Purnell? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Remember, I, and I, I'm lose. I can't think of the. It was an aesthetic representation. And it was the one where you has a has a word, a title, where you um, come, you demonstrate it by depicting almost a model. What, what's it called? Where you we, we would call four or five students would volunteer, and they would come up and depict the nursing situation. Oh, the living statue. The living statue. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think that's what a great one to try. Um, you know, in person if you have in person classes. Mm -hmm. Right, so we, it would start with this. Yeah, we start with the situation, and then someone would come. Someone brave person would volunteer to come forward, person, and, yeah, and physically um, re-represent some aspect of the situation with their body, and yep. then other people would come up and add to it. So it would be like this building statue, 
And then it was, it was a lot of fun. And after about the second or third person, then everybody would be more ready to do it because they could see how they might represent something. Yeah, it was so. It's, it's pretty dramatic and it works. Yeah, yeah and we and did it in course, one of our faculty assembly also. Did we? Yeah. yeah. And then of course that. you take a picture of it and then that's a point of discussion. So the aesthetic re representation becomes the, um, the nursing situation, you can talk about what you see in it. Yeah. So yeah, it's it's easier yeah, it's, in person. I, I, yes. Yeah. It is. Yes. It I'm is easier. It, uh, <laughs> online. I don't know. It's no. easier person. And powerful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It is, isn't mm -hmm. it? I'll never yep. forget it. So um, uh, yeah, that is powerful. You know. So uh, um, Dr. Edwards has talked to us a good bit about um, how we need to change from um, teaching, you know, lectures, you know, faculty are being asked to record their lectures and post them, and then we teach for the nursing situation. And of course, population health uh, lends itself easily to that, you know, because you could just bring up any kind of situation from the community, you know, that you've encountered, and then ask the students, you know, to. I usually use the six C's because that includes uh, competence and commitment, you know, so I find that's just a easy, um, easy thing to do, but the, um, the um, writing it up is not so easy, <laughs> but, you know, when you got to show for your faculty evaluation, what you're doing, but, um, but for research, it's been a little more challenging, you know, but even that, um, now that uh, I do all community-based participatory research, uh, I've been able to identify a nursing situation. I just had one last week uh, with Dr. King and Dr. Edwards where um, they were at, uh, out in the Glades community asking the um, uh, pa pastoral leaders in all the churches out there, you know, what matters most to them and, <clears throat> you know, how you how, you know, um, that the Dr. King and Dr. Edwards talked about their philosophy, our philosophy here at the College of Nursing and, and how that related. And so, you know, a nursing situation could be, you know, that you got this funding and you need to start um, being able to, um, you know, get buy-in from the people who wrote your letters of support, but they haven't heard from you in a year, you know, so how do you, you know, what are, what are some caring science-based concepts that you would use to, um, you know, um, achieve your goal. Oh, so, uh, so, you know, I think just drawing on your personal experience and then having the students tease apart. You know, Marianne, I know she does this all the time. She's with from Appalachia, Appalachia, Appalachia. Oh yeah, I'm from Appalachia, yep, yep. Yeah, a lot of situations from there. Um, but um, did she hear me say this? Oh, I think she... there we go. Yeah. Oh, we ran over. But anyway, yeah. So thanks everybody for that. Those are those are all some really good ideas. I know I teach. Um, um, DMP students and also PhD students. And very often um, I have them um, share a nursing situation from which they then develop um, potential research questions to either guide systematic reviews or to guide the development of their projects. And as a faculty member, it's very helpful to me to read their nursing situation against their, um, let's say they're writing a PICO question to guide their lit review. It's really helpful to, to me as a faculty member to get a fuller understanding of what matters to them in terms of where, where they want their project or their dissertation to go. Um, and also to help them build um, a systematic review that would be more helpful to them. Um, and even to, develop the columns for their um, evidence tables in terms of what matters to them and um, as a nurse and what they're hoping to explore with either their projects or their um, or their dissertations. It helps them open their thinking um, to a fuller understanding 
as opposed to just focusing in on the on the medical aspects that they're interested in. Surely, that would be an awesome thing for you to present at a, a PhD or the research scholarship oh, yeah. forum, whatever that's called. That would be, I would love to hear more about that. Well, I, I would love to share it. It's been, as I said, it's helpful to me as a faculty member, the teaching from this perspective. Um, it frees me from having to be the sage on stage. You know, you don't have to prepare these long lectures or anything. You just, you know, bring your knowing, they bring their knowing and, um, and you question and explore and expand. It's a fun way to teach, I think. See, I still want to produce my uh, book on my heads and the nursing yes. situations because mm -hmm. they were so dramatic in terms of um, hopes and dreams. I, I, I'll never forget some of them. Um, Share a little bit more with that, Beth, because not everybody's familiar with that project. Yeah, I me mean, sure one. You know, the, it was in undergrad psych. Students had to write a nursing situation about um, a clinical experience, and a two two really stand out in my mind. One was. Um, a student that um, probably struggled in other courses, but in this course, you know, she wrote the most beautiful nursing presentation about a person who, um, um, I don't even know her diagnosis. It was probably schizophrenia or something like that. But she told the story of the person talking to her about her hopes and dreams of getting married one day. And her head had a wedding veil and I'd like just a little veil glasses and some distortion to it, which she also had voices. But it was the most, it so struck me, home, struck home to me that this was a person who had a major serious mental illness disorder and her hope and about her hopes and dreams to get married. Yeah. Um, the other one was a, uh, about a, 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 a vet who had come back. Um, he had been in a war, came back and it had been years, I think, but his um, depiction was his lips were sewn shut and he cut open the top of his head and inside, I, th I think he had something inside, I can't remember what it was, but it was about, the story was about him not being able to share with us, with anybody, some of the, the fears and thoughts he had, he'd experienced, but it was so dramatic to see his lips sewn shut and that he couldn't talk about it. Mm -hmm. Too traumatic, um, but those are they just just um, you know makes your heart uh, uh, hurt my heart sometimes because sometimes mm -hmm. we as nurses forget who we're caring for. Mm -hmm. I think, sometimes, you know, that and it does help them. us to see them as human, doesn't it? Oh, to yes. understand that this is a human being you're taking care of. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Marianne, you have your hand up. Uh, I'm working on that book, Beth. I want to do that book um, Maybe in retirement. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's just a comment. I don't know who went to um, Craig Goldenfarb's presentation mm -hmm. last last week. Um, it was really good, but he talked about how 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 to avoid litigation, and he said care with compassion. Oh, if yeah. you have compassion for your patients, talk to your patients. You know, if, if you make a mistake, say you're sorry. I mean, it was all about, I mean, I, 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 I kind of wrote him a little thank you note afterwards. And I talked about the six C's that we organized our courses around. And I said, you covered like three of them <laughs> during your talk. So um, it was There's, just- There is affirming. research on, on litigation related to us saying we're sorry to the patient if, if mm -hmm. we do something that, you know, maybe shouldn't have happened. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, yeah, absolutely, Marianne. Well, and there's also a movement within medical schools to require more, um, more study of humanities. You know, and the study of humanities is a study of what it means to be human, right? So, and what they find is that physicians that um, are able to connect human to human with their patients are sued less. Yeah. So, and their, um, their um, satisfaction as a provider is greater because they're not... Um, putting their humanity in a box, you know? So we used to teach that way, right? About um, a patient who's psych, a patient in a psych setting, right? And I shut his toe in a intensive care door, which was probably four inches thick. Oh, and um, 
didn't know I did it at first. And when I went to check on him, you know, there was blood all over. And I thought, oh, gosh, you know, he would brought something in and hurt himself. Um, and when we opened the door, it was his toe. And the ethics and the moral dilemma of telling him that I'm the one who um, shut his toe in the door, that I was, that I had, was afraid because he had come lunging at me. And he said, I wish, I wish, um, I, you know, his response was, I said, I was afraid of you. And he said, he said to me, I was afraid of you. And, you know, it's just so, um, I'll never, you know, I always remember that. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, but yeah. There's great stories of um, all, I have a haiku related to that, but, you know, those stories, I think students will really remember if, and they're not just stories, they're situations, and it's all about the caring aspect. I always worry sometimes that we we tell the stories, but we forget the most important part of, you know, what we're practicing from and mm -hmm. how, you know, the concept of caring related to that situation. Mm -hmm. One time in a class, I, was te I, was, I shared a um, drawing of a patient um, in ICU and um, with, you know, with the requisite tubes and stuff. And, and I didn't give the medical story. I just showed the drawing and it wasn't a photo, it was a drawing. And then I invited students to write um, a haiku depicting what they saw in the, in the picture. It was fascinating because they all had a little bit different perspective and, um, but, and they all learned from each other because they would share the haiku and then they'd say, well, uh, how are you seeing that, you know? And it was, it was a good way to look at aesthetic knowing and um, because the, the drawing was an aesthetic representation of a, of a nursing situation. And then um, they did their own aesthetic presentation related to the haiku. And um, it, was, it was fun. And again, teaching can be fun or should be fun, right? So. All right, um, we have just a few minutes left and I wanted to take the opportunity again to share resources that are available to you. Um, and again, students sometimes are hesitant to um, take, have the courage to um, put themselves out there for aesthetic um, representations. And we do have the Journal of Art and Aesthetics in Nursing and Health Sciences. And Dr. Barry and Dr. King are um, editors in this. And there are multiple um, issues and it could be used to find a source for a nursing situation for your class. Um, you can share one of the um, aesthetic representations that are in the journal, or you can invite students to share them, uh, to look at them for, um, for um, inspiration. And I'll just show you, I'm always in awe of the software that's used for this journal. Um, Hopefully it'll open quickly. Here we go. All right. I love so, this picture. Isn't this a great picture? You want to talk a little bit about this picture? It, 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 uh, you got to open. I can't remember who the author is. I, you need to see the index. Sorry, Shirley. It's about a dysphoric. I'm trying to get it to open. I just can't, you got to click the um, here. The arrow. It, it opens right up here. Oh, yeah. there we go. Okay, so there's the beginning part of it. Do you want to just flip through it? Oh, uh, uh, yeah. And this is from ABI. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, there it is. Um, can, can you hear? I'm trying to read it. Let me see if I can make it any bigger. Uh, oh, maybe I can make it bigger. I don't think I can make it bigger. Anyway, he used a, um, a unique... Um, form of art to make that that picture look distorted and I, it probably explains it in there but I can't can we make it bigger um, anyway it's this a, is it's as big as it'll go depiction okay. of and you can read this the nursing situation related to it um but can you flip to the next page maybe uh-huh I can try sorry I've got something else go up here. here to um up here at the top yeah right there well, I like that, that was the end of it. That was it. But go to yeah. that. That one's really great too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're all good. You got to read the nurse, the story, the nursing situations with them. 
or the abstracts, whatever they present with us. Yeah, some of them are abstracts and some of them are, you know, they all have yeah. an abstract. Some of them have a recording. Some do. Mm -hmm. We started Those doing that, I think, uh, mm -hmm. a couple of journals back, but yeah. So, so some of these are, are drawings, some of them are poetry, some of them are um, narratives. It's a variety of things. Some of them are pictures of aesthetic representations. Some of our so, students are in here. Yeah, some students are in here. Yeah, so it's a great um, source for you. And um, again, it can be used for um, to depict a nursing situation, or it can be used as, a, as inspiration for students to develop their own um, uh, aesthetic representations of their nursing situation. And students all often ask me, um, how do I know if it's a good aesthetic um, representation of my nursing situation? And my usual answer to that, and you may have your own evaluation criteria, but my evaluation criteria for that essentially um, is that, um, does it help me understand your nursing situation? So does it help me understand your call, your response? understand the person? Does it help me um, understand um, from another perspective? And they always, I always have them describe what their aesthetic representation means. What is the meaning of it? Because it's not always evident, self-evident um, in it when you look at it. Because I'm not an artist. I don't judge the, you know, art quality of it necessarily. <laughs> but, um, but what is it, does it enhance meaning and understanding? And so when they're presenting them to class after the presentation, I often ask the other, their peers, um, what did you learn from this um, aesthetic representation? So, and that gives the um, student courage to do it again, <laughs> because they usually get a lot of good feedback. Um, anybody else have any ex um, experience with an um, aesthetic representation that you, that was particularly meaningful to you? I think the biggest challenge in doing that is impressing upon students that it has to be original. They can't find a poem that says exactly what they're trying to say. <laughs> it has to be their own original work. And yeah, you can yeah. have a variety of prompts for their aesthetic representation. You can have them from a nursing situation, you can have them identify um, one of the six C's that's particularly relevant and then have their aesthetic um, representation reflect that. Um, or any number of other ways in which you can do it. It can be a particular topic that you're focusing on in class um, and they can build their aesthetic representation around that. Um, Remember the um, presenter this fall at when we, um, our, our, one of our first meetings, when we were at the Hillsborough Club. I don't even know what that meeting was called. But remember the presenter- The retreat? The retreat. Remember mm -hmm. the presenter that gave us that mnemonic to try and use? Yes, yes. Yes. Has anybody tried? I haven't tried it yet, but I, I really want to. No, it would be a great it. um representation of something, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I could use that with judge. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think it was that. Maybe it was at some other setting I got that. I don't even know. Was it another presentation? I don't remember a mnemonic, a mnemonic from that that I wanted to use, but <laughs> that's just me. <laughs> Okay, something somewhere else. Yeah, could yeah. be. All right, any questions? We have just a couple of minutes left. Any questions or anything that would be helpful to you in in um, to continuing to develop your teaching from this this perspective? All right, um, Terry has asked me to share the PowerPoint, and I will do that, and she will share that with you all, and. Um, and yeah, if you have questions, reach out to me or to Beth or to, uh, well, Charlotte after December 17th, and um, she'll be out of purgatory. And um, and uh, we're happy to help you. And, and there are others on this call today that are experts in this as well. Um, we're all continuing to learn and grow. I've learned from several of your examples today. So I thank you for that. Uh, that link um, to the PowerPoint, Shirley, is going to be... How, how can we get that? I'm going to send it to Terry, and I'm not sure how she's going to distribute it. I think she's using it in her in her nurse educator course. Yeah. Okay. Isn't that, is it your, did you do a PowerPoint or is it the one, the one that 
I updated one of our earlier ones. Oh, okay. Yeah. I added some of the more recent references. And if there's just a place you could post it, we could go to it maybe. Yeah. Let me Can get that. It in the, don't we have a learning circle? Do we have a learning circle Canvas site? Do we? I don't know. Do we? I'll ask. I'll ask. <laughs> No, I, I don't, I'm not in charge of the learning circle, so I don't know. <laughs> I'm just a guest speaker. <laughs> we can well, there I think, Marlene, wouldn't it be in the ABI? Uh, yeah, I think we could put it on the ABI yeah. site. We have a faculty, I thought we, since we were recording all of these faculty learning circles that, yeah. yeah. Maybe they are there. Well, actually, I'm going to pause the recording right now. Well, I thought I could pause it. I can't. So. All right, well, we are right at 2.30. So thank you all for coming today. Terry had to leave early. 